record and we are official now. Everybody right. good. Is Rodin showing up there? <laughs> we haven't heard from him. I think he's got some family stuff going on. So Um All right. Well That's why we have a vice president, right? Christopher's supposed to have the uh the agenda. Do we have anybody else have a copy of an agenda right now? Oh let's see. If we have it on the it's on the wiki. Okay. If somebody wants to pull it up. I am working on that. As okay. We... Well, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, wherever you are. Still um, morning here. Yeah, uh, still morning here. I'm furthest east of all of you. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I am sending you the link. I'm sure, though I think most of you have it uh, to the uh, draft form. For the conference registration. <coughs> Robin, I'm having a problem finding the oh, okay. wait a minute. Monthly online meetings. Okay, there we go. Uh, June 14th. Should be, uh, yeah, okay. I just put a link to it in the chat window. Okay, I got it. Uh -huh. now. Okay. All right. So we'll start off with uh, announcements. Anybody have any announcements before we hit the bulk of the agenda? Um, my official unveiling of the COA MedStar Authors Catalog was at MLA uh, a couple of weeks ago. It went very well. They actually, uh, our IT department actually lined up the domain name so that it worked. And maybe a dozen people stayed for my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It was uh, 4.05 4 to 4.20 in the last day of the conference. I bet. It was a pretty impressive crowd. Yeah, I'd say. How long have you been working on that now? Uh, three, four years. Got to be, you got to feel good to get on the other end of that. Yes. Awesome. I just I have to clean it up and yeah. Awesome. Any other announcements? All right. First order of business, Koha U.S. Uh, business. Um, <clears throat> so for the upcoming conference, uh, looks like we have a uh, nomination of Koha U.S. officers. Um, I guess my role as vice president rolls into the, uh, the role of president this next time around, but uh, um, the roles for vice president, secretary, treasurer, and member at large are open. Um, so um, please be thinking about uh, whether you'd like to run for one of those offices for this for this uh, organization, or uh, if you have somebody in mind that you would like to nominate. Um, I'd like to have those nominations uh, for the July meeting so that people know who that is when we meet at the conference, we'd like to be able to, to vote those members in. Any comments? Okay, easy, awesome. <laughs> First one down. All right, next on the agenda, 2017 conference report. Um, we are finalizing the, uh, the registration. I'm hoping that we will get the registration open today if we can get everybody to uh, sign off on the registration form and, and say we're good to go. Uh, Robin has been working on, or is working on the uh, PayPal link for that, and we've got the information for people to send in the uh, registration fee of $25. And uh, the schedule is, uh, has been up for people to peruse. So um, we did get uh, Chris Cormack to sign off on being our keynote speaker the conference. He's going to remote in to uh, uh, do his presentation and uh, so that, that was that was huge. So we've got that squared away and uh, 
Um, I think we've got everybody's topics uh, listed on the on the uh, schedule. So I think we're we're moving forward at a good pace. So hopefully today we'll get that registration open for people to start signing up. Any questions on the conference? Man, you guys are easy. All right. Either that or my audio is turned off. Okay. <clears throat> Number three, Koha U.S. Finance Committee Report. So I have um, Todd Goatley talking about Koha U.S. Fundraising. There's seven points on there. Yeah, and yeah, I, I think that this might, um, it has the opportunity to get a little involved. So I'm wondering if we shouldn't just go ahead and can we roll Nick into a, uh, into maybe leading off with um, with the elastic search information that he has and then we can um, just take this up when when he's done any objections all right Nick it's yours all right what do you guys want to know <laughs> everything um, so specifically are you asking about elastic search in 1611 or the current state of elastic search in general I don't know anything about why this was on here. I thought it was something that you had on here. I don't know. It just says report. Um, oh, yeah. It just says report on the implementation and functions of Elasticsearch in Koha 1611. I asked for that. Okay. Awesome. And um, we're interested in it, but we don't know anything about it. We keep hearing about it. We just like an update on where it is and when we can expect it. All right. Um, Elasticsearch is in 1611. Um, however, I wouldn't recommend using it in production quite yet. Um, the current state of things, um, there is actually a wiki page. Uh, it was posted to the Koha development um, listserv just recently. Um, I'll try to find that link in a minute. Um, that lists all the current ongoing bugs that are happening with it. There is one critical bug right now that is basically preventing the indexing from working correctly. Um, but that has more to do with the versions of the underlying dependencies. Elasticsearch itself is working well. Um, it does a lot of interesting things. It is different than Zebra, which is the expectation. Um, a lot of it is just trying to figure out what needs to be copied from Zebra and what can be different, like where, where it's a problem that we're not doing what Zebra does and where it's a feature that we're not doing what Zebra does. Um, it is going to be faster, it is going to be more configurable, and it's going to give you better results. We've had a few sites test it in limited, um, limited ways, and they've reported that they really liked what they got back from it. Um, they found the results to be a lot more useful and have a lot less uh, chatter, let's say, a lot, a lot less results that you wouldn't want to be in your searches. Um, so it's Elasticsearch itself, the underlying module, like Elasticsearch, not Elastic and Koha. Elasticsearch is an extremely powerful tool. Um, the way that I keep describing it to people is basically Elasticsearch is a tank with a bottle opener on the side. And what we're really doing right now is using that bottle opener. Um, that's the features that it has are just there's going to be extra things we can do like adding patron searches, doing that. We can probably do some statistics and reporting using Elasticsearch. Um, but right now we're just focusing on getting the search in and adding it. Um, the web page with the list mentioned some of the things that you're going to want. Um, like right now you can't add, you can't add indexes. You can specify which fields go into an index, but you can't add a new index. Um, so for instance, barcode is not in the base indexes that you get with Koha. So it needs to be added in, um, but there's no way for the user to do that on their end right now. Um, little things like that and a couple other bugs are what we're working on. Um, Unicode support needs to get added. Um, and really what we need at this point is we need people in the community testing it. Um, so we've got uh, the new RM, Jonathan Drewart. He is working on reaching out and trying to get new people involved in the project and helping revamp the way that we get new people involved. If any of you are interested in working on it, please let us know and you can do that. Um, on the side of when are you actually going to see Elasticsearch and use it, um, at Bywater, we're going to talk about how we're going to build the servers this summer. Um, Elasticsearch 
one of the great features about it is that it is really powerful. It does take some underlying computer, you know, you need, you need power to run it as well, but it's clusterable, which means that we can build it in a way that when we need to add more servers, we can just bring those online, spin them up, and boom, we get more performance. Um, so we need to build on our side the back end for supporting Elasticsearch as well. Um, that's the rough overview, like state of things. Um, so probably we're looking at maybe 1711 for Elasticsearch to be production ready, um, but we won't even be we won't be prepared to roll it out until this summer. And 1711 will be the earliest pr time that you would probably see it in a polished way. Nick, a uh, couple questions on that. Yeah. Um, is Elasticsearch a, um, something that uh, users can, uh, the, the libraries can turn on or off, or is it a major thing to incorporate? Is it something that you have a choice of? Um, Once we have an Elasticsearch server for your site, yes, you'll be able to choose whether to use it or not. It's a simple system preference that switches you from one to the other. However, if you don't have an Elasticsearch server running on the background and your server is not configured to use it, turning on that switch won't do much, you know? If you have a switch on your, in your house that isn't wired to anything, you're not gonna really expect your lights to come on. Okay. Hey Nick, will um, Elastic and Zebra both be functioning on the server? They can be run concurrently. Um, as far as we can tell, there are no, at least no major issues in doing that. They can be run side by side. Um, they will both get updated and you can switch back and forth between the two to kind of see a different result set. Um, and probably in initial testing, um, at a few sites we've been able to set it up so that you actually have two URLs, one URL which searches Zebra, one URL which searches Elastic, um, so that you can actually real time compare the, you know, compare apples to apples, do the same searches on the same set and see the results. Um, so as we get into the stage where we're actually looking at rolling it out into production, that will probably be the first steps in testing and we'll probably reach out to a few, a few libraries, test it out with them and then start to expand out from there. Sorry if I, I missed this, but I, I understand that Elasticsearch is going to get us uh, uh, better results. Is there going to be a performance increase with Elasticsearch as well, or is that yeah. not the same? Yeah, no, we expect the performance to be much faster. What's, um, what's the initial testing uh, or uh, benchmark on that? Is it we have not been really focusing on the benchmarking of that at this point. You know, some of what, some of what still slows down search is actually the processing on the Koha end. Um, and once we have Elastic in and functioning, then we can work on taking advantage of its processing so that we're doing less and we can work on speed then. Um, but even as it is, it just, I can't, I don't have benchmark, I don't have numbers, but I can tell you it feels faster. Um, if you, you can, if you're using Koha DevBox, um, you can provision that and when you bring up your box, you can have it running Elastic. Um, and that's a good way to compare, just to test it out in your Koha dev box and see it. Um, it works out of the box right there. And so anyone interested in testing, if you need help getting a Koha dev box set up, we're happy to work with you on that because um, we'd love to have more users testing and get more feedback. And that's, that's one of the big things we need right now is we're just going to need user feedback. I can only tell so much from searching my own test database because I don't run a library out of my house. Nancy, your group would be good for that. Max, those guys, they're really good at that. Any other questions? All right. Todd, it's your show. Cool. The show. So um, just looking at the agenda, um, uh, one of the questions I had um, for those who are in this meeting, um, and uh, Robin, you, you went ahead and you created the 501c3. You're the one who submitted, correct? So it's mm -hmm. actually registered there in, mm -hmm. in Kansas. Kansas. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's, uh, I, I guess, imperative. I didn't realize that was so important, but that does, um, I guess, for tax structure and everything else, it's something that we have to um, keep in mind. Mm -hmm. um, is, there, is there anybody here who has experience with 501c3? 
Is there anyone who's well um, dealt with or worked with a 501c3 in the past or have they had to set it up? I don't know what you had to go through to do that, Robin. I would imagine there was uh, an application that you had to submit and certain criteria that we have to meet. Yeah, I had to go through the state um, Secretary of State's office and fill out the form and then um, we hired Jim Minges to help us with the federal IRS stuff. The state stuff was pretty easy. The federal stuff was a little more um, challenging, all the questions and decisions that had to be made. But um, that was the first time I'd done it. Um, so <laughs> my expertise is uh, this particular, you know, just what I've done. So I don't really no worries. Have a whole lot more. I'm just, I'm doing some investigation, so I want to make sure that, you know, I, I go to the state where it's actually, the application has been submitted. Yeah, we're using the Nichols um, office as the official um, address. Okay. And we are the officers of the, I don't know how how they explained it, but uh, we had, it had to have a physical address, and um, since I- is there, any, is there any conflict that you know of using the Nichols office for the um, COI U.S.? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, I don't, it's just a physical location for them to send mail and stuff to. Um, there's no requirements that we have to have in order to be the um, office. That was one thing Jim and I looked at. Um, yeah. So I, I, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing. So it doesn't necessitate having a PO box or something like that, just so we can say it's completely separate. Good. Um, so well, we can do that later if we want, probably. So. Yeah. And I think probably one of the things that's going to be helpful, of course, is with, um, with bringing in new members and getting membership fees, <clears throat> being able to apply that to some of the needs that um, the COI US, of course, will, will have. And especially probably with some of the suggestions that, um, that I have, especially in some of my re research for fundraising and for 501c3 fundraising. Um, so one of the things that we've been able to um, Robin set up and uh, we got the coding taken, she got the coding taken care of um, was for the uh, PayPal. And I think for Amazon as well, is Amazon mm -hmm. on the site? Yeah, okay. it is now working. Uh, somebody, Michael from Bywater um, actually did the coding and worked with me to get it to work because I got the coding up there, but it was not working. He managed to make it work, so. <laughs> Yes, and Robbins uh, did send me the code for the PayPal link that I'm going to try to put into the registration form. If anyone else has actually done this before, I would gladly give you all the files. Um, <laughs> <It's>, any takers? <laughs> yeah, like I'm I not said, sure. Well, um, there's the part where you submit the form and then where you submit the PayPal form, and I'm not sure which goes first. So I have to read up on PayPal unless you know. I think it depends on, um, yeah, I think it depends on how we, our workflow is going to be on the, on the uh, registration form. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this will be a good process for us to figure out, especially if we're going to do online uh, registration for membership fees. Um, this will be a good test run for us. One of the things I can do is put a um, successful payment URL link in. So if you want to do payment first and then registration once payment has been confirmed, um, all I need is that URL of the registration page. If you prefer just to have, I mean, you know, it's, it's I'm not sure how the form is, is set up exactly. So um, that's just kind of a decision we'll have to make, I guess. We'll get that ironed out. Yeah, I think we should also put the registration form on something other than the philobiblios.net, such as coaus.net. Um, so I, I can send somebody the files and they can add them by FTP. Okay. I tried bringing that up too, and it's not showing for me, Fred. It says um, couldn't find that page. Uh, yeah, I sent you the wrong URL. Oh, okay. Um, that so that maybe that's the last one that I need to open up. Sorry. Yep, I see it now. Yeah, give it a try. I sure hope I put in the right thing this time. You did. Thank Good. you. Good. And like I said, I haven't looked at the coding behind it. Um, the Koha US, because we're using MediaWiki on there, um, makes just basic HTML really difficult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it's possible we could do it. I'm just, because it, 
yeah, it's going to hijack any URL we use and try to uh, um, run it through the wiki. And oh, okay. I mean, we could run it from my website. I just feel nervous about it. Sure, sure. So one of the things I'm curious about is. Um, I, I sent out an email to board members, sorry, the rest of you that are here that aren't board members that didn't receive that email, I can always forward it out to you, but I've been asking some questions. Um, domain names, you know, going to GoDaddy, getting a coaus.org, they offer three, like three for one. Um, of course, I'm sure the price is, is fitting for all three, but, you know, they give you different options. So I think you could get out for less than 60 bucks. You can get a domain name that you can um, secure for a couple of years. And uh, which is something that I'm, I'm more than willing to, you know, contribute. I, I'd be happy to go ahead and purchase the main name. Um, and then also considering on the GoDaddy side, if we wanted to set up uh, a website so we can start isolating ourselves from all the organizations and associations that we currently have from, you know, where you're at, Robin, and from where you're at, uh, Fred, and, and from where I am at with, um, with Bywater Solutions. So if we could separate and isolate so that we're more focused and it doesn't look like there might be some, other things happening in the background that people might be weary of? Well, we already own Koha US Net, um, and I think maybe org. I don't remember. Oh, oh good. Uh, I go through DirectNIC um, is my um, registrar. Uh, I think we didn't get calm because I'm not sure why, but um, Neckles uh, has been uh, contributing that, uh, the domain name uh, last year or two, uh, and then we'll transfer that over to to Koha paying for it. So again, Nichols is no longer um, so involved. <laughs> but we do have Koha.us.net and Koha-us.net is our domain. And like I said, I think I'll have to check um, if I bought the org too when I was at it. Because if I didn't, or if I did, um, maybe we can have Koha org uh, for um, it was interesting when I was in GoDaddy and I, I plugged those in and they all came up that they were available. Did you put the dash in it? Because it's Koha it. dash US is what I own. I didn't put the dash in. Is yeah. the dash necessary for? Uh, not necessarily. That was the official name um, according to the government. So that's okay. what we did. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, we can. Change. Whatever you submitted to the 501c3, <laughs> I think we'd want to adhere to. So. Yeah, the official name is Koha-US in okay. the, on the paperwork. So. Well, you could also re register Koha-US mm -hmm. and just and have just, it switch over. Yeah, shoot it over. It's true. Checking to see. And if we, hadn't, if we haven't done that, Robin, I might just go ahead and pay for that. But I don't know where it's better to be registered for. And then if I pay for it, you know, I don't know what. If I have the address for Koha, I mean, I'd be happy to pay for it and just donate that to Koha-US. Mm -hmm. Just register it that way. So if I have that information, I don't mind doing that. Just isolate it so we've got it. Okay. Then also, you know, where we're going to have our website, um, who we want to host it with, and and uh, and in creating that, you know. And I don't know what the skill sets are like. I'm sure that um, there are plenty here in this group, but um, you know, who wants to spearhead that, and who wants to um, start getting this going, and and then what that's going to look like, what that will entail. Okay. Okay. Slide aside. I just looked up Koa dash us in moniker where i get my domains uh dot com dot org website yeah it looks like i had done koha dot na oregon net but i did not do that for us when okay. we changed our name so we can also get that website for 99 cents for the first year <laughs> hey a moniker <clears throat> yeah wonder what it goes up to after the first year 24.99 that's not bad not bad at all. What's the size? What do they give you? A couple gig? Uh, it's just the domain. Okay. Oh, just the domain. You said website. Sorry, I was thinking they were going to allow us to go ahead and build a website there. So no, no, it's a domain called website. Okay. <laughs> Got it. So these are some of the things that, so uh, they're necessary for us to move forward. Of course, we're trying to get into the fundraising. That's not what this organization is all about, but it's something that's going to be imperative for this organization to be able to move forward with the things that we all want, whether it's um, helping Koha US, helping uh, the Koha community, and also in particular, I think, for developments, things that we want to see in Koha that are going to be relevant and, um, and maintain Koha relevance. So a suggestion, because these month timeframes that we have for meetings are 
important. Um, you know, I mean, it's, I'd hate to see them any longer, but for me, especially now, given my position with Bywater Solutions, since I'm now working with fundraising, I'm supposed to be working kind of both sides. We have our own crowdsourcing, but I need to support Kohai US as well. So I have to differ differentiate between the two and support them both. Um, but uh, but I, um, I would like to try to see if we can have, um, if there's an opportunity for a second meeting, you know, as we're trying to develop this. I know that sounds a bit much, but I wonder if for, if for anybody who wants to participate, if we could have something until we finally get to the point of making these decisions and getting them moving. So, you know, if we know that we've got all the domain names we need, and if we have a website, and then, you know, making sure we have a committee to start working on that website, what that should look like. You know, I mean, this is probably something we could wrap up in one meeting if all these things were purchased and put in order. But I think some of the things that hold people back are, who's going to purchase this? And like I said, I don't mind, I'll purchase the domain name. I mean, I, I'd even probably go so far as to purchase year one for our website, just as a donation to Koha US. Well, there is that, but we did just get um, $50 from a very generous donor that we could use to pay for the, uh, uh, that was Todd, by the way, for everybody who <laughs> is not aware. Uh, he tested out the PayPal button by donating 50 bucks. Um, so, I mean, Koha US right at the moment has, um, after your donation, $800 in the bank. Um, so, Koha can pay for whatever needs to be done. We do have the money um, there. And then if we're continuing to, to fundraise, um, now if you want to, you still want to donate, that's fine. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not Well, I don't want to take anything away from what but, we're trying to develop. Yeah. But at some point, um, it would be nice to just have Koha US paying for all the stuff. Because like I said, right now, Nichols is paying for the domain name and, and different people have been donating different things. Um, so, yeah, but however you guys want to do it. But I, yeah, I'm not going to turn down an offer to to pay for the uh, domain name if you really want it. <laughs> as, as none of us should. Um, and that's one thing I think I want to also um, kind of broach on since we said that. And uh, not to stand out that I made a donation. Yeah, I wanted to test, but then I kind of thought, well, I better put my money where my mouth is. You know, here I am talking about trying to get people to donate to Koha. And I hadn't even made a donation yet. So I went ahead and did it. So I'm, I'm not here to influence, but I'm here to suggest that if, um, if any of you feel inclined, you know, it's funny, it's, it's each one of us that makes the difference. So even if it's just this group to start so people can see that we're all doing it, it's nice to be able to say that we've contributed to something that we believe in and we can carry that forward. And I've said on that. Um, so then some of the other things that start to enter in, of course, is I've been looking at a number of different sites. Google for nonprofits um, looks like a good one that we might be able to get some use out of. Uh, there are some requirements. They want you to make sure that you can um, you qualify as an NGO and that you, um, you know, you can qualify through TechSoup. So there are a lot of these, you know, kind of items that you have to go through and, and different steps that you have to move through in order to be accepted, in order to get your um, NGO nonprofit status, 5013 status, so that you can use some of these tools. And these tools, of course, come at a reduced price. For nonprofits, and then they offer you a number of different things too, so that you have not just a, you know, a national but an international um, uh, appeal, and uh, you know, and, and you're able to reach out further than just you know your normal scope of business. So, for us, we wouldn't just be looking Koha US, although that's important. Um, we'd be willing to accept anything because I think even as a US organization, we want to work with the international organization as well. We're just a group, am I right or am I wrong? You can correct me if you want to, but I think that Koha is international. It's an international software. Yes. So then our appeal, of course, is to work with and, and, you know, and do things for Koha US, but whatever we're doing in Koha US, we're impacting internationally as well. Mm -hmm. So to also have not just a US appeal, but an international appeal. Not that we have to have that kind of presence right away, but that's something that we need to keep in the back of our mind that it's inevitable. So, um, you know, on this whole process, while we're thinking about domain names and we're thinking about websites and what that website should look like and donations and so forth, you know, just not only just U.S. or North America, but what that international appeal is going to look like. Um, does anybody have anything to say in regards to any of this? I know it's kind of, I, I think it's new for all of us. I mean, we've talked about it, you know, and everybody thought, oh, yeah, fundraising, this and this is great. You know what? It's not a car wash. It's not selling brownies or cookies on a, on a sidewalk. 
next to the Girl Scouts and trying to beat them out. It's um, it's, it's something more, and it's uh, it's a little daunting if if you're new to it and if you haven't done it, especially at this level. And I'm just pointing out, I'm still working on the uh, CSS. Am I muted? Nope. No. Okay. okay, good. I, um, I am still working on the CSS and everything, but this donations page um, is where uh, you can go to um, test out the donate button yourself or add Koha US as your smile uh, dot Amazon dot com target or um, send a check. And we've gotten a check or two um, before we got all this set up. So um, from different organizations. So uh, Todd was mentioning it and I just wanted to, to say that it is there and you can send people there anytime. Um, like I said, I'm still working on the CSS to make it a little less crazy looking, but. Robin, just as a side note, where, where, what is our balance at this point? Um, right now, I, what I had, the balance before Todd's uh, donation was 770.28. And then um, he donated fifty dollars, forty-eight twenty-five of which we got after PayPal um, takes their percentage. Takes their percentage, and I have transferred that into the bank account, but it's not registered on my paper thing yet. So seven seventy plus forty-eight twenty-five, eight hundred ish. I have a question. Um, I'm working on my next year's budget. We our fiscal year starts <laughs> July 1st. I'm going to specify some amount for donation for uh, Koha development. So I want to know. I want to be able to tell my uh, director that what I donate is going to go right to development. For are we going to separate funds? Or are we going to let people designate what what their donations for? Or how is that going to work? You're muted, Rob. I did there note that on uh, PayPal there is a place to uh, make note about uh, special notes about your donation. Right. I was going to say there's. I know there's a note. It's not. It doesn't say. You know. Um, oh, it's, you have to put it. So I'm kind of curious if it was something that we didn't have that was part of the Koha US site, but let's say it was a. It was a development that you wanted to contribute to the 501c3, but let's say it was something that you know Bywater had listed on their site as something you wanted to contribute to. Can we can we do that? Can we say we'd like this money to go towards a particular development that I see Bywater Solutions is working on? Or if it was if it was Biblibre or if it was Calix or Catalyst or anybody, if there's something that you saw out there that you wanted to contribute to, is that something that we can isolate down to? Um. Uh, you can put a note in it. We don't have right at the moment any uh, way of tracking donations. That's one of the things we need to do is figure out. Um, we've been looking at um, open source nonprofit um, management software. Uh, and I, I think Lizette's not here. She's been looking into it most the most. She has most information about it right at the moment. But um, if we had that kind of software, we could set up funds in that software and track much more easily than we can right now. Right now, I could set up a spreadsheet, you know, keep track of things, but we don't really have a way of, um, of doing it easily. Uh, that being said, uh, we can always make a note next to a donation, and it's just whether or not we get enough money to do anything. Um, Robin? That's yeah. On on the donations, on the uh, particularly with the the PayPal donations, is there a way to uh, to have um, different things to check off for donation? Like, I just want to donate to the the group mm -hmm. in general. This is a membership fee. Um, I'd like this to go to a specific a specific development that Koha mm -hmm. US is. Working we can on. customize the button to have a drop down list, and they can choose where they want their donation to go. If we want to do it that way. Um, and then I when think I that would be great. Yeah, that's it. We just need to come up with what, whether, you know, what the what that list is. as long as we could have something in there where they could designate something specific outside of that list, that would be, that would be great. But we could give them several things that they could uh, mm -hmm. apply. Them. We have a development committee set up and I know they reported once, but um, 
couldn't we use them to to identify some things? I know there's libraries out there that have money and they're frustrated because they have not been at, had access to developers to to do what they want to do. So maybe Kohai US could help by gathering this together and and working with Bywater to to uh, get something to happen. You know, and to make sure that the playing field is all equal and even, one of the other things that I sent out an email to um, to the board again was um, a, just a list with links of, you know, we can start developing a pool of pro Perl programmers that we could go to. Um, you know, different people are going to have different time requirements, and, you know, um, some are going to be able to work at different hours than then you know, others will be able to. So for us to be able to find somebody who might be able to take that job or to be able to list something and that the people that we use from this pool can go in and look at and they can either bid on the job or they can accept the job. I think what, be it Bywater, be it Biblibre, be it some uh, freelance Perl programmer. But developing that pool is gonna be kind of important. And so what you're saying, Nancy, I think you know if we had something like that and if you needed to have it done overnight we were able to get this thing taken care of. Um, I think that would probably be good for us. Well, we have a, a committee, and I, I'm not really sure what they've done so far. Um, they were looking at developments to possibly um, put some money behind. But if there's stuff out there that's bigger than, you know, some minor things that we could come up with that we could pool our money with. I know there's libraries out there that have money. They would like to improve Koha. We just need to get that all together. I think maybe a website will be the place where we can do it, though. Um, we need to get that out there, something better than the wiki, yes. um, for people to look at and make some decisions. Um, I just started a conversation with my purchasing person about how am I going to donate, and that's going to be a problem with the county. They don't like you to donate county funds. So. I've got some Friends of the Library gift funds that I can put towards that, but I'm going to have to have something a little more specific to point to other than we're just going to get together and, and pool our money for something. So we're going to have to have some concrete things to show and, and uh, offer. I mean, if it was going to be a development that you needed to, that you wanted to have done specifically, and let's say you got with Bywater and you said, um, could somebody give me an estimate for this particular development? They gave you a number and then you said, yes, we have that amount. We'll go ahead and pay for it. That would be sort of, that would be one of our crowdsource funding or just mm -hmm. pay, pay through developments that you could do that you would get invoiced specifically for that particular development. So that's right. one route you can go. But if it's going to be through the 501c3 and it was going to be a donation, then being able to work on the back end so that if you said, you know, to somebody, this is what we're looking at. We need to have this development done. You might still need to go through the process of getting the quotes so you could then offer that maybe to Robin or somebody. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to put this money through the 501c3. So we That's need, true. We need to get invoice back on that. We need, uh, Bywater already said they're going to do it, or this Pearl programmer over here said he was going to do it. You know, we have somebody who, who understands, we would like to vet the Pearl programmers. So I mm -hmm. talked with Kyle and he said, yeah, there probably would be some kind of vetting program we can put in place. And so he'll evaluate that with all the other things he has to work on. But he and Nick would put something like that together. But until that point, um, you know, yeah, you, you've got a couple different avenues. You can go with us direct, and then we can invoice you directly and do the development or do the 501c3 and just deal with whoever the treasure is and get invoice back. And then, you know, all that information would then either come to Bywater or somebody else that you have found. Okay. Yeah, but I think getting you the invoice probably is not going to be an issue. All right. Do either. Yeah. <laughs> I had another thought, uh, which probably has already been done. Has anyone tried finding a college or university professor who teaches Perl, who is looking for students to do a semester project? That's always a thought, Fred, absolutely. I think the local schools would be a kind of a hotbed for us to be able to get some development done. Kids that are maybe, for projects. Yeah, and maybe give them a small stipend at the end of the semester. Yeah. Yeah. And those are other things that we should look at, look at as an organization, not only development end, but also probably the testing and evaluation and not just develop it up to a point and hand off on it, but make sure it gets through testing. And then, you know, even if it's a matter of, um, you know, a $25, $50, or $100 stipend, depending on the amount of testing that they have to do and evaluation, so we can get it ratcheted up through the development phase, you know, being able to um, 
to pay for people to go in and do that testing because I don't know why this community has difficulty with testing some of these um, developments, but it seems to be one of the things that holds us back at times. Maybe we could start by approaching uh, academic institutions that are running COA saying, you teach Perl here? Well, guess what? Yeah. And that's something that in my, in my position, it might be um, kind of outside of the scope of fundraising, but knowing that that is necessitated for us to be able to move forward, it probably would be some of the preliminary work, you know, reaching out to some of the universities where they may teach Perl and also just trying to find people, again, freelance Perl programmers, and I found a lot of these guys, I mean, some of the prices were just, you know, really out there, like 150 bucks an hour. And some are like 15 to 30 bucks an hour. And they have really good rankings, you know. I mean, people have gone to them a number of times. And they really like the work and they're very professional. So you can read up on all their biographies. You can find out the kind of work they've done. They, even, you know, will tell you where you can go and see it. But, uh, yeah, the universities would be another great place to do that for sure. But, how many of us here um, work for a university? Can you wave your hand? John does. Anybody else? If you don't have a camera, you can raise your hand in the participants window too. John, do you have anybody at, um, at UM who are they doing pro programming up there that you're knowledgeable of? I'll have to take a look around. I'm not really certain. Here at the business school, we're kind of isolated from just about everything else. Uh, but we do have a college of engineering, and I believe there's also a separate computer science program that's part of the literature, science, and arts college. Uh, I'll take a look around and see what I might be able to find out. Cool. Thank you. University of Michigan, they probably invented Pearl there. <laughs> <laughs> Larry Wall probably lives in Michigan, somewhere close to you. <laughs> and since it has changed in the midst of this uh, meeting, I will tell you our, our total balance now is 866.78. We got another $50 uh, yeah. donation while we've been talking. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Mr. Brannon. Love it. There you go, Chris. <laughs> and I'm going to be making a few small donations when I'm testing the button. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That works. That's how I got started, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> if I make a donation of a dollar, will it? Will the fees add up to more than a dollar? Quite possibly, yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, but you know, no. if you do, uh, I've got a fee template here. I, the problem is there's like a base thirty cents or something like that. But uh, yeah. It's so thirty cents up. plus two point nine percent, if yeah. I remember correctly. That's Robin, right. do you do you have a minimum uh, donation set? I don't believe I do. No. Might be wise mm -hmm. because I mean we would hate to be nickel and diamond out of funds. I like it if we had something on there that if they put an amount, you can a little, a little bubble pops up says, "You sure that's all you got?" <laughs> you can't just you go throw five dollars higher. Are you sure? <laughs> no, just ask him. <laughs> can, can you sacrifice a coffee this week? Exactly. <laughs> Help a starving co-op user. <laughs> you know, it's kind of fun. And when I first went in there, I put a million dollars for the donation. And I sat back and I looked at it, and laughed. And I thought, boy, you know, wouldn't that be fun to be able to do something like that? And I thought. Koha community, you Koha US would all be lit up, but then I thought Brendan would be killing me going, how come I never knew you had this kind of money? You could be helping <laughs> in so many ways. <laughs> so those are some of the things that you know I'm working on. And 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 those are some of some of the things that I have of concern. It's um, I, I spoke with Chris Davis the other day and I told him, I said, you know, it seems a little slow. I know everybody's sort of disjointed. So we talked about, you know, the speed of library and how that is. And um, I, I work in the library, Nancy. And uh, so we know sometimes things can take time. There's a certain level of bureaucracy that happens in there. But I think for, um, for this group in particular, to get, this, to get this going and to have something, it'd be fun if we had, even if we had um, the beginnings of a website that we could, um, that we could show people when we're at the conference. You know, just something that we can offer and we can get input while we're there. And I think that would be, be a great discussion. I think, um, you know, talking about fundraising even still, I don't think I've offered that, Chris, to uh, – or I don't know if it's on the agenda. I haven't seen it, but I didn't offer it since I just came into this position. But I think talking about that and being able to talk about our website and talk about our presence and stuff like that, I think 
that would be something wonderful to talk about. And I think it really allows people to open up their minds and kind of wax creative and get some really good input. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Brandon. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I'm all for us having discussions. In fact, you know, I, I know the concern about us having, you know, major discussions once a month here. I would like for us to be able to have ongoing discussions. And Todd, I know that you have sent your uh, information uh, uh, to the board members to generate some discussion. Um, I would like to encourage anybody, if there are things that we wanted to talk about and not have to wait month by month for a discussion, we can always generate discussion through the listserv because we have a listserv going. We don't have to necessarily wait for the uh, meeting, but if there's something that, that's generated that uh, we need to uh, do an official discussion and decision on, then we can do that at, at a meeting and we're all up to speed through the, the listserv. So all these discussions that, that we're having I would like to encourage everybody, let's get these topics talked about in the listserv so that we can keep moving forward and not be held back by this once a month meeting. I want us to go forward. I want us to move faster. You know, I don't want us to go out of control, but I want us to move faster. Um, it feels like these things kind of, are, they slow us down and hold us up. And once we can get past this and we can just put this thing on cruise control and we all know what we're working towards and, just plug into those areas so we can, you know, find and match and meet our needs. I think that would be just fantastic. Um, going back to your your website thing, I just wanted to ask the, the group here today. Um, so, you know, I know that we have about nine minutes left here uh, for this meeting. Does is there anybody here that would like to try and tackle? Uh, uh, working on the website if we if we get that going uh, I know I have some website uh, ability and uh, ideas but um, I don't want to steal the show from anybody else that wants to contribute to Koha US and and if this is one way that you can contribute we'd love to have you on board and, and, and helping out in that, that arena I'd be happy to help. Just, oh what's that I'd be happy to help set it up I just redid the website at uh, my library. Um, I mean, if we can do WordPress, I, I, I can I can help you with it. I, I'm not. I guess I was a little late to the discussion. I don't know exactly what the website is for, but is it going to be like a replacement for the wiki? We're revamping Romper Room, so we want to know how to actually set it up. And no, it's all about Kohai US, Chris. Sorry, I just wanted to play. Part of the problem is the wiki, uh, like Fred's fabulous form that he created, would be really difficult to uh, have in the wiki um, because it would require making a template and then writing JavaScript to make it just, it's an insane process um, to get HTML onto a wiki. So we need to have some other kind of, um, a, somewhere we can put plain HTML that without jumping through flaming hoops. Jesse's done a, a great job. And I, I think that, you know, if, if she wants to lead and spearhead this, that would be fantastic. I, I call on her. She's extremely creative, and I think that she'd bring a lot of great ideas. Awesome. So, so awesome. Jesse, if you want to take that on, that would, be, that would be great. And Christopher, if you want to contribute, um, connect with Jesse. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Um, All right, sure I threw out a, I, you know, there, there's probably plenty of hosts out there. I threw out a link on the uh, the, the chat. Um, we use this for uh, a few different uh, places for hosting. Um, I just helped set up a, another website through them, and, and they offer reasonable prices uh, 2M Host. Uh, so they're they're a good company. They've been really stable. Um, they offer really uh, competitive prices. So. Um, that's one place to, to look at if you can find a better deal, uh, uh, go for it. How do we want to set this up? Robin's more or less in charge of the funding, so <laughs> we're just kind of dumping on you, Robin, and say, oh, well, you go out and just do all this stuff for us. But I can create an account um, and put in our, our – I don't have a checking account. or I've got a checking account. I don't have checkbooks because – uh, I, quite frankly, I just don't write checks, but I do have a debit card, and I can use that to pay for 
an account wherever you guys want to go. And then once that's paid for, Jesse can take it from there if, if that's what you want to do. Yeah, I've got a suggestion. Um, hey, looks like you can hear me. Uh, <clears throat> for, at least for the uh, registration form, uh, I could register coa-us.org and add it to my list of or collection of domains, create a web spot right you know, this afternoon. If we want. And I think I can do it without paying extra except for the domain, which I can afford. Uh, this 1099. Uh, so it would be running from a legitimate address. <laughs> uh, let me let me ask this, uh, Jesse. Um, would you um, would you have any considerations for uh, a host's site that you uh, uh, think that would be uh, workable for Koha US? Um, I, it doesn't have to be 2M host. It could be anything, but. Uh, um, if you had a suggestion for that, could we set something up and move our form to that and we can run off of that for the time being until we get our website going, but we could uh, set that form up on there? Sure, I can um, email the group a list of suggestions if you guys wanna take a look and then we can take it from there. Okay. Um, why, don't you, why don't you send that to the board? And we can, we can all sound off on that and, and uh, make a make a decision on that. Okay. Um, but um, Fred, you said that the the registration form is uh, the final draft is pretty much ready, uh, except for the PayPal link. Okay. And I also need to know what uh, email address to send it to. Okay. Is that going to limit us, Fred? Didn't you say that there's going to be some change and you're, you're no longer going to be a member at large? Will you be still, still participating with, um, with the co-op community and the, the co-op meetings? Or, you know, it's, I'm, I'm, I just want to make sure that we don't have anything that's going to be the ties that bind and the next thing you know, we have right. to do something and all that. I'd, I'd rather be with one, you know, one outlet and just be consistent with that so we don't have to worry about trying to maintain because people sometimes hodgepodge these things together and next thing you know, it just turns into something you don't want to have. Yeah, I agree. I was just thinking of something we could do fairly quickly. Yeah. And if I'm allowed, I might be convinced to uh, run for member at large again. Oh, since I ran well. unopposed last time. <laughs> well, I, I, thought, I thought you said that you were going to be, I didn't, okay, good, good, good. Wonderful. All right. What do you think about that, Jess, you good? There's a Koha US board. Um, if you look in the email, the contacts, you can just type in Koha US and the board comes up. So all the board members are right in there. Cool. I'm, I'm always hey, glad. If you're agreeable, if you're agreeable, we could set up Koha.org on my site and I'll just, when we get something permanent, move it over. <laughs> what do you have for, <coughs> for design? Excuse me, do you have a WYSIWYG? <coughs> Or is it just straight HTML? And uh, I'm not sure. What I was planning to do is just put the form on and then give somebody else the password so they can upload it. I uh, use Fat Cow for that host. Jess, do you have Fred's information? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Uh, Fred, uh, you. Did you send out uh, the, the link uh, to the committee for the, the final draft on that registration form? Uh, yes. Okay. I'll encourage everybody to, to um, uh, give their final input on that. Uh, I'd like to be able to um, get this up one way or another um, ASAP because I want people to be able to register for that conference, but because uh, um, we were hoping to, to activate something on the 12th and we're a little past that, so um, as soon as we can we can get it moving forward, that'll be awesome. Todd, okay. anything else on uh, on uh, the fundraising? Well, there's there's a few things, but I think we fit on some of the major topics, and I think that we need to get over these hurdles before we can move on to some of the others. Um, I would like it if people could go in and take a look at Google nonprofit. Just take a look at that, and and maybe put some uh, give us some feedback. Um, it's it's pretty easy to. Find it, um, Google for nonprofits. It's a google.com slash nonprofits. 
<clears throat> but just take a look. I think it's a consideration for us. We probably should have our own separate world and account that we're working in and, you know, all that stuff. So we can really start to just make ourselves the organization I think that we want to grow into. Um, we don't have to have all the bells and whistles right now, but just to have the basic structure. We can look at, uh, people can come in, take a look at calendar, they can send emails from, um, from that, from the Google nonprofit, and I, I think mm -hmm. that would benefit us. Okay. All right. Well, before we uh, close up shop, is there anything else that somebody wanted to, to bring up? Open time? Got it. <laughs> Did we talk about uh, nominations for officers? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's first I'll thing on the list. I'll watch the recording. Yeah. Um, You're nominated if, for if you, have any, uh, if you have any nominations or you want to nominate yourself, uh, please submit those to the listserv, and uh, Chris will take note of them, and uh, we'll put them on the, the agenda for uh, discussion next meeting. Uh, Christopher, what is our date for date and time for our next meeting? Okay, hold on here. I believe it is July twelfth. I probably will not be at that meeting, but July twelfth. Sorry, you don't have that option. <laughs> July twelfth, uh, same time. I've got 10.30 on my calendar, so. Cool. What time zone are you in? Central. 8.30 Pacific. All right. We make you get up early, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Just a reminder to everybody, if you have anything that you want to discuss uh, for this, uh, this group, uh, I encourage you to uh, open discussions on the listserv. Uh, we'll talk about things and continue discussions and keep moving forward uh, and anything that needs to be uh, finalized or decided on we'll do at the next meeting but don't leave it to the, the next meeting to bring it up. Uh, feel free to bring it up in the listserv and and uh, we'll keep trudging forward. Is there uh, a consideration for an IRC channel for Koha US? Uh, it's something that we could do. Bring it up. Yeah, that's like a good idea. We'll, t we'll hash it out. <laughs> that's our first good discussion in the sense. Yeah. Do you think that there would be enough chatter to sustain it? <laughs> I hope so. Possibly. Yeah. It never has to hard to sustain it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Todd, thank you very much for, for everything that you brought to the table today. Uh,